Ask and you shall receive. Welcome to another installment of Ask Lawlands. Welcome back to Lawlands. My name is Sanam and thank you so much for tuning in today. Guess what? Guess what? This is the first Ask Lawlands segment ever. Woohoo! Thank you so much to everyone that has been sending through questions. I'm so excited that this is officially happening because when I first started Lawlands as more of a TikTok YouTube situation, (laughs) then that's when I started getting questions coming in and it it sparked this podcast because I realized there are people out there that need to hear this information. So I'm so glad we're building this community, everyone. Thank you so much for, for making this happen and for getting this ball rolling. I did receive a question that came up last week and funnily enough, very timely, it relates to public holidays. And I thought, why not best thing to do is to create a specific episode dedicated to this. And please, if you've got questions, reach out to the the email address. Absolutely send them through. You can remain anonymous just like the person that I'm going to discuss today. So the scenario that we have here is that we have an employer who has a casual employee and this particular employer works in the hospitality sector. Now, I'm going to say casual because it looks like it's casual on the face of it. But when you look at anything in employment law in New Zealand, you'll notice that as I discuss different cases or different pieces of legislation that's being dissected by the courts or the uh, Employment Relations Authority, what they do is they really peel back the layers. So the, the court will sit there or the authority will sit there and go, what is the intention? What is the meaning? What is the relationship? What was the actions done by each party? So I say casual, but we take it with a grain of salt because it is about the true nature of the relationship and the intention and the actions of everyone. So here on the face of it, we have a casual employee. This casual employee works three days a week and they generally work three hours in every shift that they do. Now, the reason why I say we take casual face value is because this person actually works set days every week. So let's say for for this scenario, it's Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Every week they come in, they do a three hour shift. Now, this particular question caught me a bit off guard because like I said, when I put feelers out, I didn't specify uh, what, what are you dealing with? Is it public holidays? So I didn't expect a public holiday question. And it was great timing because I recently put out that, that episode around public holidays. And the question that I got was for, for a HR professional or somebody that uh, may be well-versed in employment law would seem like a very simple question. But when you're dealing with employees and you don't understand how casual employees work or what the relationship can be like. And then to add public holidays and the otherwise working day into the mix, it gets complicated. So this particular employer asked me, what happens when I've got a public holiday coming up on the Monday and I'm closed for that period? And this particular casual employee would have worked on that Monday, but they've taken a few Mondays off in the past because of sick leave. How do I know what what they need to get? Do they get the three hours? Do they even get the public holiday? What's the situation? First port of call and first point I would say is if you're dealing with anything similar to this and you're, you're sitting there going, hmm, that's actually a fair question. I'm also a little bit curious about this. Please go back and listen to my previous episode around the public holidays and otherwise working days. It really focuses on different scenarios that can come up. And this particular scenario ties in with that because when you're looking at the relationship, it doesn't matter if they're casual, if they're permanent, if they're fixed term, if they are entitled to the public holiday, it is because it is an otherwise working day for them. So if it is a day that they would have normally come in and worked and that's the day that the public holiday falls on, then that's considered an otherwise working day. But in this scenario, what happens when this particular employee has taken a Monday off maybe two weeks ago because they were unwell, then they take another Monday off a week before that because they were unwell, 
the question that came up was, do I go back five weeks and have a look? Do I have to go back a couple of months? What's the time frame? Here is where I would say it really depends on your business, the relationship, what's in the employment agreement. There are so many factors. So under Section 12 of the Holidays Act, under the primary piece of legislation that we always need to focus on, we know for a fact that there are several factors that you need to consider when you are looking at an otherwise working day, applying to an employee or not. They range from what's in the employment agreement. Also, what would the expectation be of the employee to work? Are they, you know, if you didn't say a single word, bat an eye, do anything, would they just show up on that Monday? Because they expect that there's going to be work on that Monday because that pattern and that relationship has formed. Do they, do they go onto a roster and do you rotate them around? It, according to the roster, would they normally come into work? Now, in this particular scenario, even though this employee has taken those Mondays off, they, they're, this expectation has developed for them to come in on a Monday. So if they normally work three hours on a Monday, you would need to most likely pay them for an unworked public holiday if you're closed because they're entitled to that Monday as a public holiday because they have a pattern and a history of working on that Monday. Now, in terms of how far back you go, we know, and I discussed this in the last episode, the Wendy's uh, burger case or cases because they have been burned a couple of times by the labor inspectorates. That is a perfect example of why five weeks, four weeks is not good enough. And that's why you need to factor in all of those other bits and pieces that are part of that legislation. Because if we applied the best four out of five rule or the best three out of four rule, like Wendy's applied in in those cases, what ends up happening is this particular employee may not have worked a couple of Mondays, but prior to that, they might have worked seven Mondays in a row. And if that is the case, then you've now undercut the employee. And like what the court said in those cases was that you have paid below the minimum entitlement or the, the threshold, which means that you have breached their their minimum entitlements. So that is where the, the concern lies. And that's where I would say you really need to make sure that you don't just go off of your payroll system. This particular employer, they use a, a payroll system commonly known amongst a lot of people. And I said, look, this is exactly what happened in the Wendy's case. What Wendy said was that we relied on our payroll system, but unfortunately it is just not good enough, especially when it comes to a wage claim. In terms of how far back you go, sometimes I would even say go back three to six months. And the best way to look at it, and I know that it's a disadvantage to a lot of employers, is to give the benefit of the doubt in this situation. So the the threshold and the parameters is what a reasonable employer would normally do. That's usually our benchmark in New Zealand. What does that even mean? What is what a reasonable employer would do? That's confusing. If that is what we need to look for, because that's what we know that these cases are suggesting, then we need to go back and have a look at, okay, how many Mondays has this employee worked in the past? Let's say that they worked the last four Mondays and then all of a sudden their shift changed and then they started doing Tuesdays and they would no longer do a Monday. But how soon did that happen? Is it fair to give them just this Monday and to stop giving them Mondays in future because it was so close in proximity to this public holiday? So all of those things need to be factored. And I know when you're running a business, this is an added expense, but it is a very critical expense. And what I explained to this particular employer is that one, if you get audited, this casual relationship will be a bit of a concern. Because what's going to end up happening there is that the the labor inspectorate may open up your books and then they're going to have a look and, and say, oh, this is a casual employee, but they're working Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So those are fixed days. And yes, they call in sick, but uh, they haven't really declined any shifts and they normally come in. So this is actually a permanent employee and you've only been giving them the 8%. So they are actually entitled to their annual leave. You know that, right? And now you need to give them their annual leave on top of that 8% that you've already paid. And if you don't comply, then there comes fines. And it's it's a whole thing. You don't want the labor inspectorate coming around. You want everything to look clean and tidy for them. And this is one of those cases. Absolutely, 100%. 
I would say that if you have a situation like this and you're dealing with a particular employee that has called in sick, then you need to have a look at would they have been expected to work on that day? If they were not sick, would they have come in? And if they would have come in, how many hours would they do? It's not easy because like I said, you are paying for this. You are forking the money out to make this happen. I understand. But when it comes to a labor inspectorate coming in or an employee complaining, you want to make sure that you've done the right thing so that you can turn around and say, nope, this was correct. So hopefully this has been helpful. Like I said, I want to introduce these. I Please feel free to send through questions, share this podcast, tell all of your friends, all of your colleagues, anyone and everyone that could benefit from this and absolutely send through an email to ask lawlens at gmail.com because if you're dealing with something in the workplace, I I guarantee you that you're not alone. There are other employers that are going through the same thing. And employment law is just one of those things that's always on the back burner because you're trying to run your business, you're trying to do your day to day. So that's not lost on me. And that's why I'm here to help. So feel free to reach out. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a lovely day, night, evening, morning, whatever it may be. And Happy festive season as well. I hope everyone's enjoying the holidays. And if you're listening to this after the holidays, then take a moment to reminisce the the beauty of, of the festive season, whether it was Christmas or New Year's, whatever you celebrated during that time. Thank you so much and take care, everyone. Mm-hmm.